Here at the Echo Lake Aquarium and Science Center, we are stewards of a very special turtle of the Lake Champlain Basin. soft-shell turtle, they have a flexible leathery shell. They can pick up off the ground a few inches on long legs. They have a long neck and they kind of have a pointed nose. They look sort of like a dinosaur. And when they run, it's like a little horse. They're, they're a cold-blooded animal, so warmth is good for them. That helps them grow, it helps them be active, and if it's too cold, that's not so good for them. They can't escape their predators and grow and do the things they need to do. Although this unique looking turtle is common throughout the Central Plains and the Midwest, in Vermont it's a threatened species. Found only at the northern end of Lake Champlain, the spiny soft shell turtle struggles to survive against natural predators, human disturbance, and habitat destruction. I bring turtles, eggs, and embryos home. Some of them don't make it, they go into my freezer. My wife tells me, get them out of the freezer. I bring them up to UVM, and they are doing a study on the genetics. So this is my temporary holding quarters for turtles that I bring uh, back from the beaches. So these guys will be going to Echo here in uh, just next week. And uh, they'll spend the winter at Echo and then be released uh, at an event we'll have in June. Where Hopefully they're going to be bigger and stronger and more able to uh, survive the their rigors. Together with Vermont Fish and Wildlife, Echo cares for the turtles, helping them grow bigger and shares the turtle's story with visitors at the Science Center. Most predators in freshwater want to swallow their prey whole, called gape limited. So if you're bigger than that largemouth bass's mouth, that's a good thing. You're not going to be eaten. And they, they'll size up their prey. What's easiest for me to eat? Just about anything can eat these little guys. And the whole point is the larger they are, the fewer things can eat them. Yeah, so predators are a big deal, because they can really change the success rate, the productivity. By caring for the baby turtles at Echo during the winter months, they are able to grow bigger than their wild counterparts, giving them a better chance at survival when they're released back into Lake Champlain. Spiny soft-shell turtles hatch from an egg the size of a quarter. A hatchling turtle is 1.5 inches in diameter, about the size of a plastic milk cap. With a little help from Echo, the hatchlings will grow to almost two inches. You know, think of an Oreo cookie with feet. I mean, it's just, it's kind of sad, actually. I mean, if the skunks and the raccoons don't dig up the eggs and eat them, then they get out, they have to run the, the gauntlet. For conservation biology, an individual turtle isn't the end game. It's what is the population doing? And Steve estimates, I think the last number I heard was 200 adults in the adult population. And if you study conservation biology, that's a low number. All the eggs laid by a female turtle, 2% survive to produce a breeding adult. And if you think about that, if you have a one-to-one -one sex ratio, one male to one female, a female, in order to maintain the population before she dies, has to replace herself in her mate. These turtles lay their eggs on rocky and sandy beaches on Lake Champlain. Um, they're restricted to the north end of the lake. They don't go very far inland. You don't find them in people's backyard ponds. If you think, and I always tell people, like, if you think about what you do on the lake in the summertime, you want to be on the beach. A lot of people want to be on the beach. And all it takes is one footstep to kind of crush one shell, and then it starts stinking up, and along they'll come the raccoons, the possums, the skunks. But the baby turtles had nothing to fear from predators while at Echo. Now they're ready for the journey back to their natural habitat, Lake Champlain. 
the turtles will be transported 45 minutes north to one of the few sites that has ideal habitat for spiny soft-shell turtles. We have concentrated nesting areas now because there's not that many places that both have the right substrate, either sand or uh, shale pebbles with gravel mix uh, that get good sunlight and that aren't disturbed. Our goal at ECHO is sort of for the turtles, um, let's get them to survive and grow. So those individuals that we take care of um, will have the size when we let them go of maybe a two-year-old or a three-year-old. I actually think this is a species that we can be successful at. It will take a sustained effort. You don't want to lose any of the pieces. If you imagine if you're tinkering and you're taking apart a clock and you're going to put it back together, some of those pieces can't just get swept off the table. You kind of need to put them back. Bad things can happen and you don't have a lot of, a lot of animals spread out in, the, uh, in an abundance. You have less variation in where they are in time and space and their genetics. It doesn't have to have a utilitarian value to me personally. I mean, it's part of our legacy that stretches back for eons. And it just seems out of respect we should maintain all the parts of this wonderful world that we have. Now that you've heard the story of the spiny soft shell turtle, what do you think you can do?